talking to myself over here. It's a beautiful day. Beautiful day in Salinas, California. Hi. Thought I'd read the paper, see if anybody's interested in joining me with the paper. San Jose Mercury News. Anything exciting happening there? Nice day. Sunshine. I got grapes coming in. Trump border policy in flux. <sighs> Fighting for job, judge publicly names donors. By terms of ethic code, Pruszynski must read aloud in court a list of lawyer contributors. 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 Oh, get back. Techie Showtime. Valley's nerd culture. Now a star attraction in Hollywood, boosting Tinseltown's tech cred and changing the way stories are being told. Hmm. So I remember Trump was going to have this big border, you know, where he was going to put a wall up and everything. And uh, he was going to make Mexico pay for it and expel everyone living in the U.S. illegally with the help of a deportation force. Within 10 weeks to go before the election, however, buffeted by conflicting advice from aides and advisors, Trump has seemed to be in full indecision mode. Go figure. At a news Fox town, oh wait, Fox News town hall taping last week, in the face of pressing questions, he proceeded to poll the audience at length on the fate of a million, 11 million people. Trump is now planning a major speech Wednesday during which he's expected to finally clarify his stance. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm really just gripped with the idea of what it might be that he's going to say. Wow. Supporters are hoping for a strong, divisive showing. But for critics, many are already disposed to vote against him. His wavering of what is seen has been his signature issue seems to be continued on page 8. Let's see. Mm. Like a warning that he's unable to handle a central element of any president's job, making decisions. You think? It also underscores how little his Republican campaign is invested in the nitty-gritty of outlining what he would do as a president, especially when compared with the more detailed plans of his Democratic rival, Hillary Clinton. It's just puzzling who has served as a policy advisor to several Republican presidential candidates. This is an issue on which he rode to prominence in the primary and the issue on which he continues to stake much of his campaign. But from the start, Trump has never been the kind of candidate to pour over thick policy books. Indeed, he has even mocked Clinton on the subject. So to date, Trump's campaign has posted just seven policy proposals on his website, totaling just over 9,000 words. There are 38 on Clinton's issues page, ranging from efforts to cure Alzheimer's disease. Well, that would be really awesome. I, that would be so awesome. Uh, to Wall Street and criminal justice reform, that that's important. And our campaign boost that has now released 65 policy fact sheets totaling 112,735 words. I don't know why that's important, but. So what has he put out? Does it say? Um, well, his positions on a host of issues remain vague at, at best. For example, Trump slammed the Common Core education standards and touts the benefits of local control of education. He has no formal detailed plans for improving public schools. He talks about student loan debt and the increasing costs of higher education, but he's yet to propose solutions. He has teased plans to make childcare more affordable, but has missed his own deadline for unveiling them. There's been no doubt about where Trump stood on illegal immigration. The wall was going up. Mexico would have to pay, and those estimated 11 million people living in the country illegally were going to have to leave. But over the summer, Trump began suggesting closed-door conversations with Hispanic leaders that he might be open to softening his stance. Oh. His, his uh, campaign manager said his position on deportations was to be determined, whatever that means. The first thing we're going to do, if and when I win, is we're going to get rid of all the bad ones. If and when? He doesn't sound very confident. 
We got gang members. We got killers. We have a lot of bad people that have to get out of this country. We're going to get them out and the police know who they are. We don't do anything. They go around killing and hurting people and they're going to be out of this country so fast your head's going to spin. No, I don't read the sports page. I'm not. I could read it. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, Trump supporters say questions about his recent waffling are overblown. His running mate describes him as a CEO at work and consults with various stockholders. Well, <laughs> goodness. Well, it looks like oh, Trump loves sports. Well, okay. I don't. I didn't know that. Romanian servicemen hold torches as they march in a memorial parade during events in the capital of uh, Bucharest, marking 100 years since the day Romania began its involvement in World War I. Very interesting. It was pretty sad. I like to watch a lot of old movies that talk about World War, and they say the World War. They never mention World War II because obviously there was no other World War. It was just World War I. Um, so Ben Affleck is offering a hint on Batman's next villain in the video. I guess it's going to be Deathstroke. No idea. Sorry, I guess I'm out of loop. I kind of know who Ben Affleck is. I guess you guys all probably know who he is. And Jennifer Lopez is now reunited on stage with Mark Anthony. Who cares? Oh, Justin Bieber has, in, has returned to Instagram after two weeks. After shutting down his account because people were being big meanies. That's what it says right here. People were being big meanies. So, Bieber said he didn't he didn't like what people said about his girlfriend, who was underage at the time. She turned 18. Ooh, he's 22. Never mind. Uh, here's a really, really sad stuff. I mean, I'm reading the Mercury News. San Jose, San Jose Mercury News. Here's really, really sad. Gene Wilder died. Now, I don't know if you guys all know Gene Wilder. Well, I mean, I didn't know Gene Wilder, but boy, how sad. How so sad. What a talented man. And his, his wife, who died of breast cancer many years ago, Gilda Radner. Oh, she was such a, a crazy, talent, amazing talent also. Wow. Just super sad. Blazing Saddle is really important. <laughs> well, here's another thing. This is something new in science. No, I'm not watering the plants, but I probably should water the plants. They should probably be on right now. Steady suggests fall from tree killed human ancestor Lucy. You remember Astro Astropalopithecus? Lucy? Um, no, I don't think she played sport. At least, I don't think we know that yet. Well, she was in a tree. It says that um, her tree climbing might have led to her demise, a new study suggests. An analysis of her partial skeleton reveals breaks in her right arm, left shoulder, right ankle, left knee, injuries that researchers say resulted from falling from a high perch such as a tree. She likely died quickly. Well, that's nice. She didn't suffer. Um, several other researchers, including Lucy's discoverer, disagree. They contend most of the cracks in Lucy's bones are well documented and came after her death from the fossilization process and natural forces such as erosion. How Lucy met her end has remained a mystery since her well-preserved fossil remains were unearthed more than four decades ago. Her discovery was significant because it allowed scientists to establish that ancient human ancestors walked upright before evolving a big brain. Lucy was a member of the Australopithecus. I'm not saying the rest. An early human species that lived in Africa between 4 million and 3 million years ago. So her skeleton, which is 40% complete. Well, you know, what are you going to do? Looks like there's some severe weather threatening the south in Florida. Some guy's walking in the rain and he's being plummeted. I guess he went for a, he went for a jog and now he's... No, I don't want to read the sports now. Sorry. Ooh, ooh. Oh, geez. You know, you wonder about this. New school opens up at site of Sandy Hook Rampage. I thought they, yeah, they demolished the school. That's what I'd heard. I wonder what they're calling it. 
the students, uh, the $50, $50 million replacement was built on the same property as the former school, but not in this old footprint, which is good. All that remains are two large concrete slabs containing dinosaur footprints that also sat outside the old building. School officials, okay, um, what are they calling it? I hope they're not calling it the same Sandy Hook. I don't see where it's elementary school students attended Sandy Hook on Monday for the first. Well, there's looks like they're still calling it Sandy Hook. I guess they thought that out. Very sad. System closes us in on region could wash out holiday weekend. Yeah, it's Labor Day's coming up here in America, so. Well, here in Salinas, it's not not bad at all. It's beautiful, maybe 70 something degrees. Two slain nuns remembered for needing for helping the needy. Hundreds of people filled a cathedral in Mississippi's capital city on Monday to remember two nuns who spent decades helping the needy and were found stabbed to death last week in their home in one of the poorest countries of the state. Some guy, 46 years old, Rodney Earl Saunders of Mississippi, went in and murdered them. He confessed to the killings but gave no reason. Their bodies were found in their home after they failed to show up at work Thursday. Could elections be hacked? I don't know. FBI investigating suspicions around state computer systems. Hackers targeted voter registration systems in Illinois and Arizona, and the FBI alerted Arizona officials in June that Russian ha hackers were behind the assault on the election system in that state. The threat was credible and severe, ranking as an eight on a scale of one to 10. Well, that would be interesting. Former Arizona Republican State Representative Kelly Ward is running against John McCain in the Arizona Republican primary. He's attended Donald Trump rallies and embraced his rhetoric. rhetoric. She has. Senator faced tough primary battle versus arch conservative. So I guess McCain has been in the Senate for over 30 years. He transformed himself from a war hero into a political icon. John McCain now finds himself in more jeopardy than any time during his political career, and for that, he can blame Donald Trump. This re-election campaign, his fifth, is forcing the Arizona Republican to do battle on multiple fronts, testing his political dexterity in ways unlike any of the previous races, including two unsuccessful bids for the presidency. First, he must clear his primary Tuesday a day after he turns 80 against an arch conservative whose campaign received a late six figure boost from a Trump donor. Wow, he insists that he will not alter his high wire campaign strategy, which basically involves steadfast support for Trump, while also reserving the right to regularly criticize the GOP nominee when he does or says something objectionable. I wish McCain would just come right out and say, oh no. North Korea. Oh my gosh. North Korea. North Korea denounces UN condemnation. Country warns US criticism of launch could initiate action. North Korea. God, that, aren't they great? North Korea. I mean, it's like Trump, but 24 seven in uh, the other side of the world. North Korea has denounced a UN Security Council statement condemning its four latest ballistic missile launches, calling it a hostile act penetrated by the United States and a warning that it could precipitate America's self-destruction. Wow, serious concern that North Korea had carried out the launches after six ballistic missile firings in fragrant disregard of the council's repeated demands to halt all missile launches and nuclear tests. That's pretty scary. UN says Israelis, Palestinians imperil two-state solution. Both sides erode confidence and peace recommendations. 
The United Nations says that the political leaders on both sides of the Israeli-Palestinian conflict continue to shy away from the steps needed for peace, further eroding the prospect of a two-state solution. They called for a radical overhaul of how we deal with the problems of Gaza. The area remains in the grip of militants and dependent on aid and humanitarian assistance. Um, Since July 1st, Israel has advanced the construction of over 1,700 housing units in the occupied West Bank, including in East Jerusalem. Let's see what else. Italian quake survivors furious over funeral plan. Oh, there's a lot of negative stuff in the paper today. Government idea for state service at distant airport hangar rejected. Italian quake survivors rebelled in anger Monday over the government's plan to hold a state funeral for their loved ones in an airport hangar in a distant town where scores of bodies were being kept in refrigerated trucks and let them watch it on screens from near their emergency tent camp. Ooh, one relative of seven-year-old twins who perished in the central Italy's uh, Quake was so upset by the announcement he could barely speak, holding up seven fingers when explaining how old the children were. Give us back our dead, yelled one man in the crowd of several dozen survivors. Sensing a public relations disaster, Italian Premier um, Reverse Course said he would, he said the latest state funerals will take place Tuesday in the devastated hill town. 231 of the Quake's 292 victims have been found with the death toll rising by two Monday afternoon when two bodies were extracted from the rubble. The bodies of some 10 people, including that of the town's baker, are believed to be still buried under the rubble of hundreds of buildings that collapsed. I didn't realize that Italy had such a, was so quake prone. I really hadn't known that. I mean, living here in Salinas, we are very aware of earthquakes. I'm maybe, you know, as a crow flies, maybe 30 miles to the San Andreas Fault, one, you know, very serious quake. Mm. Let's see that. Hunger grip Sudan, refugees in Uganda. Uganda, where the refugees arrive, when the refugees arrive at this camp near the border with South Sudan, the beans provided by the United Nations are their only source of protein. There's no milk, not even for the toddlers with, with dis, distended bellies who tightly hold onto the mother's skirts in the intense afternoon heat. Now, less than two months after a new outbreak of violence in South Sudan, sit a surge of about 70,000 refugees into this neighboring East African country. The UN and its partners are struggling to feed them. Last month, the UN announced that South Sudanese refugees arrived in Uganda before this latest wave would see food rations or cash allowance cut in half. They're running on empty stomachs. Wow. There are not enough toilets and water sources. Earlier this month, a cholera outbreak in some refugee centers infected. Where's the rest of it? <laughs> I don't see it. They're missing the print. An Aust Austrian museum team has recovered two giant tusks of other remnants of what experts say are apparently the breeds of a rare mammoth breed. After construction crews unearthed them while working on an Austrian freeway, the find was reported by Austrian media Monday. Well, John Lennon's killer is not out again. He's going to remain behind bars after being denied parole for the ninth time. I remember that. Mark David Chapman. I was in high school. Wow. I mean, I just graduated from high school. I can almost remember where I was when I heard it. I was driving in my Volkswagen Fastback on Main Street in the afternoon, and I believe it came on the radio. 
file. He shot and killed a former beetle outside his Manhattan apartment. He's 61 years old now, serving a life sentence of 20 years to life. The parole board noted that Chapman has since described the murder as selfish and evil. The board concluded that the factors supporting Chapman's parole were outweighed by the premeditated and celebrity-seeking nature of the crime. What do they think is going to shoot some males again? No, I don't speak Russian, sorry. Thousands of migrants rescued off of Libya's coast. Obama is going to go to Asia for his final tour of term. Climate change, ISIS, human rights on the agenda for the eight-day trip. Where is he going to go? Um, he's going to go on a tour through Asia. He's going to leave Wednesday and attend back-to-back -back summits in China, Laos. Um, he's going to talk about climate change, which is probably really important. Hmm. Cops dealing with mentally ill under fire. In wake of report from Baltimore, civil rights officials renew efforts. You think? What else? Fifty-four government recruits slain in Yemen bombing. Oil wells south of Moscow burned days after key town retaken. I don't know what that is. M O S U L. I don't know how to say that. Mos Mosul. This is in Iraq. They're burning the the um oil feels that must be really good for for the um, environment so here's a cartoon it's the um, political cartoon in certain cases I think burkini should be mandated somebody says because they're talking about a fat person Well, that's the front section. What else? Continuing. Sex assault, assault bill passes. Measure will mandate prison for attacking unconscious vi victims. Mm. Legislation inspired by outrage over a former student athlete's light punishment for sexually assaulting an unconscious woman outside a Stanford frat party cleared its last hurdle Monday when the state assembly uh, ununanimously endorsed it on a bipartisan vote. Boy. And Trump attends a private event. His first appearance in the Bay Area since San Jose rally. So, Republican, uh, he was in a $25,000 per ticket fundraiser in the home of a private equity CEO. Neighbors, some welcome gifts waiting for him. Uh, with 20 Hillary Clinton for president signs stocked, staked around along the road. That must have been welcoming. Um, while the candidate, controversial candidate, got a warm reception and a lot of money from the guests gathered outside the home, the reception outside was definitely chillier. I happen to be enthusiastic about having an experienced, competent wo woman running for president. Um, I am not a fan of Mr. Trump. As helicopters buzzed overhead and San Mateo County Sheriff Stephanie stood their ground near the entrance to Fox's gated property. This woman said she and others made sure Trump would see the signs when he entered the narrow winding country road leading to the Fox home. But because the location of the fundraiser surfaced so late in the day, protesters were few. Three sea, otter, three sea otters shot and killed. Really? I mean, really? Santa Cruz, which is nearby. I know. Ah, I, I, I totally agree. I mean, what's wrong with people? It's not like they're good eating or anything, you know? What? Why would you shoot and kill an otter? There's a lot of crazy people out there. 
Yeah. But come on, no no life. You're absolutely right. But you know, come on. Ten thousand reward for information on the crime boy. I sure wish I could take that on. Mm -mm. They probably won't catch the person either. Next page. Let's see what's up here. Well, they're going to fog for West Nile virus in San Jose and Milpitas. That's good. Chemical treatments are scheduled for late Wednesday night, so I'm glad they've got something worked on on that. Well, here's the picture of the, the home area where uh, Trump went into the, um, to the area there. How do I like Periscope? I guess. It's kind of okay. I'm getting used to it. Oh, look at here's a close up of the little otters. Look at them. Oh my goodness, it is so sad. Well, it's not necessarily the ones that are dead because these are obviously alive, but. They're on the endangered species list. It says that for southern sea otters to be removed from the endangered list, the population would have to exceed 3,090 for three consecutive years. Why 90? Well, how do you arrive at a number like 3,090? Well, it says they were hunted relentlessly in the 1800s for their pelts, which are denser and softer than mink fur. California sea otters were feared to be extinct until a small number, about 50, were discovered in remote coves off of Big Sur in the late 1930s. I live kind of near Big Sur. It's just over there, you know, maybe uh, 35 minutes if I drive, you know, driving, but of course you got to go windy around. The ocean's really close to where I'm at right now. Um, they were protected by the Dangerous Species Act in 1977 and began a slow comeback. They counted 3,054 otters, which is an encouraging number, they said, up from 2,711 in 2010. It says historic population numbers are estimated at about 16,000. I really didn't realize they were that rare. You learn a lot when you read the newspaper, don't you? I'm really surprised. Oh my God, what is wrong with these people? Look at this story. A couple accused of burning a two-year-old poodle mix. God, no wonder newspapers are going out of business. I mean, yeah, what the heck? I mean, gosh, veterinarian said dog died slowly after, shortly after arriving at clinic. Placed in scalding liquid. and then waited more than a week before seeking treatment. Why would you kill a poodle? Why would you do that? Did they think he had burnt, like fleas or something? I mean, they had accidentally spilled a cup of boiling water onto his crate. Right, uh-huh. Saying he'd been injured more than a week earlier. An ex expert forensic veterinarian who assisted in the investigation said the pattern and severity of the injuries appear intentional and consistent with a dog being lowered or placed in a scalding liquid. The details of this case are horrific. Oh, I just can't even read that anymore. I mean, look at the little puppy. I mean... This is in Bay Area, which is near me in San Jose. Can it get any worse? Oh my God. Suspect DUI crash kills two. Third victim is in critical condition. Police arrest man, South San Jose. Two women were killed and a suspected drunken driver was arrested on suspicion of manslaughter after a crash in South San Jose on Sunday night. Pronounced dead at the scene. God. A 75-year-old man was driving the car 
The driver of the Camry, a 34-year-old of San Jose, was treated at the hospital for minor injuries that never hurt. Immediately evidence, there was immediate evidence at the crash site suggesting that his driving was impaired. So the 73-year-old that was driving, I think, or the still hospitalized, or no? The front passenger was 95, the rear passenger was 73. Those people are dead. A 75-year-old man who is driving is in critical condition in the hospital. Veterans Walk to Honor and Supports Police. Oh. Area Teens Win Science Scholarship. That's nice to know. Three area teenagers are among 20 students nationwide to win their prestigious Davidson Fellow Scholarship for their science projects. Well, that's at least good. That's good to know. So, let's see what's going on here. Movie guide. Airport scares hard to avoid with cascade of false reports. In the moments before reports of gunshots created a panic at the Los Angeles airport, police with weapons drawn had confronted a max masked man outside a terminal who was carrying a plastic sword dressed like Zorro. Authorities determined that there were no gunshots. The only people at the airport with guns Sunday night were officers, but false reports of an active shooter trigger a ripple of chaos that sent frantic travelers racing into the streets and onto the tarmac. You can always, these people are calling in false alarms and things like that, and it's just making it more difficult for them to do their job because it's, you have to react to all all, all of it. Homeowners snap up all fireplace rebate funds. Apparently, the, the, they're trying to make sure the air quality is, is good. And to do that um, in the San Francisco, San Jose Bay Area, I believe they're giving rebates to people who change from a wood-burning fireplace to a to like a gas, gas fireplace or who get rid of them at all. And so there's been a whole bunch of rushes to people to um, to go in and do that. I still have a wood fireplace, but I hardly ever use it. But Salinas actually is one of the known for, I think it has the best air in, in the United States. Got to have something going on for us. Congressional panel blast plan to fund state's high-speed rail. God, $64 billion. <laughs> $64 billion. This, it's supposed to go from like the bay, um, like the valley, like Fresno, Modesto area, to to all of it, to Los Angeles, and yeah, that seems like a really good idea deal to have high speed rail, but it doesn't seem to be happening very cheap. System examines students' housing problems. Just a couple photos, in case you're interested. There's a crossword puzzle that I'm not clever enough to figure out to try to do. Obituaries, I just, oh, all those smiling people, all those people who are going to miss them and love them, it's just, okay, best friend has a loser boyfriend, ask Amy, I always like it, ask Amy, she's, 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 she's great, we'll see, let's see how we'll do, my best friend and I are high school seniors, and I strongly dislike her boyfriend, he treats her horribly, tells her no promises, about cheating on her while they're arguing, entertains other girls and makes jokes about it. Recently, she asked who the girl he was texting was and he said, oh, I don't know, I have three. When I told him he's made her cry, he bragged to his friend. They fight over the same things over and over. She knows she should leave, but she can't imagine her life without him and she wants more time with him. We've all been there, haven't we? You know? I understand, trust me, it hurts. She used to tell me that he doesn't cheat on her. Oh wait, she used to tell me that since he doesn't cheat on her, it's fine. But now she says things like she doesn't know if he's cheating or not. At this point, I don't think she'd leave him even if he did cheat. 
she puts up with this and I don't know if it's because she she does love him or if it's because it's her first boyfriend no ma matter what I do I can't make her see that he's not good for her and she deserves so much more I hate watching her hurt herself I get so angry over this I've even cried because she was crying over him do I stay out of it or do I help her nothing I say or do changes her mind how can I be a better friend and help her out what do you guys think This is going to be a lesson she needs to learn herself. I think the friend should just be there for her friend. Advise as she can. I mean, she's just as out of it as possible. It's really hard to understand the emotions that are going on in these teenagers and even people my age, 54 years old, are going through. Just be there for her. It's going to run its course. If she's constantly advising the friend and the friend is constantly ignoring her advice saying you know please tell me what to do and then when she tells her what to do which is to leave the boy and she doesn't do it then after at some point you need to say you know I'm the, the advice I have for you is the same advice I have given you over and over and you don't want to take it so I'm gonna stop advising you so if you need someone to talk to once you've left him, I'm right here for you. But, you know, this is going to be something she's going to have to learn herself. It's her first boyfriend, and you know what? It hurts your first boyfriend. It hurts all boyfriends. Trust me, I know. So, Dear Amy says, according to the very helpful website, loveisrespect.org, one in five teens report being in toxic or abusive dating relationships. Based on what you say, I would put your friend in this category. Continue to support her, but understand that she may continue to stay with him, even though he is an emotionally abusive jerk. We all know those. I understand that on many levels she knows this, but she's making a calculation. She would rather have stale crumbs from the sky than be on her own. You can help make sure she knows she deserves better. You sound vulnerable and insecure. You should continue to be her supportive friend, but you can't can stop urging her to leave. This choice needs to come from her. Only continue saying to her, you deserve so much better. Some abusive relationship patterns start with that first relationship. And unfortunately, if she thinks this is acceptable or normal, she may continue to have relationships with guys who treat her badly. Urge her to do some research about relationships. Loveandrespect.org offers a very helpful online chat as well as a free texting hotline. Hmm. Wow. Here's another one. Dear Amy, I'm almost divorced. I've known my daughter's boyfriend's mother since we're both teenagers. You know what? I've known my daughter's boyfriend's mother since we're both teenagers. Okay. She's been divorced for five years. We've had this unspoken thing for each other for more than 30 years. We met for drinks and hit it off just talking about our kids. Is it wrong to take this relationship to the next level? Absolutely not. If you're free and she's free, go for it. I would do your best to kind of wait until you're fully divorced only because jumping from one relationship to another relationship isn't always a very good idea because you're going to make decisions that are maybe spontaneous. I mean, yeah, it might, it, it'll help. It'll really help you make you feel better about being divorced because, you know, but you might not find that you're going to make really good decisions at this time when you're so emotionally, you know, it's so much emotion there. So, so what Dear Amy says is, when you're all the way divorced, you should feel free to take this relationship to the next level. I think it's probably right. Peanuts Classics. It's got Sally. She's yelling at her, her brother, Charlie Brown. She runs in and she says, this is it. It's the first day of school. Put on the boiled eggs. Shine your shoes. Make your lunch. Conjugate your verbs. And, and she runs out of the room and then Charlie Brown's still in bed going, conjugate your verbs. It's cute. Um, I read a lot of cartoons online before I go to bed, so I already know a lot of these. My favorite ones. So in the duplex, the human's talking to his dog, who's drinking a cup of coffee, the dog, not the human. And the human says, I'm back to my memoir and I need an incident from my life that shows how I've brought people together. And the dog says, 
How about the time you got your nose stuck in a blow dryer in the mall restroom? And the human says, how did that bring people together? And the dog says, you forgot? Three TV news stations and four fire departments showed up for your rescue. <laughs> and the human says, oh yeah, it started at the food court. Rex Morgan, I read that every night before I go to bed. And it's like a soap opera. I never had ever watched, read it before. But I would see that it was always in the newspaper, and I thought one day, you know what? It's been in here forever. I think I'm going to read it for a week or two and see if I can get into it and see what people see in it. And I have absolutely just fallen in love with it. It's like a soap opera kind of, kind of thing. It's a cartoon soap opera. But they do like only three panels, and it, it, it crawls along and right now it's gotten back to the storyline that is one of my favorites it's with um uh milton who is a like i guess a billionaire and he's got alzheimer's and he has a very young wife who adores him but she is just you know it's really really sad because she really badly wants a child she's done so much for him she really has and just to see somebody go through Alzheimer's is just so cruel. I mean, his health looks really good, so this may be deteriorating for a long time, and there's probably nothing they could do for him. But then again, it's a cartoon strip, so maybe Rex Morgan's going to be able to do something for him. I don't know. And in the cartoon Zits, which is one I don't read every night, the mother, she's got her arms crossed, that's it, Jeremy. You're grounded. And this, and Jeremy says, okay. And and then the wife and the mother has all this image of all these fun things Jeremy's going to go do in his room. Play the guitar, listen to music, talk on the phone, eat pizza. And so she says, go to my room. Because <laughs> he isn't going to have that kind of fun there. In Pickles, this is kind of funny. The husband and wife are sitting on the couch and the husband's reading the newspaper like I am. And the wife is doing folding the laundry. She says, laundry is so much fun. Sometimes I find money in the pockets. And sometimes I find M&Ms. Not a single M&M, mind you. A whole pocket full of gooey melted M&Ms in someone's cargo shorts and all over the rest of the laundry. So the husband gets up and he says, I'll show myself to the doghouse. Oops, starting to get a little cool out here. So in Baby Blues, this is another kind of fun one, the mother is talking to her little girl who just got out of school and she says, how's school so far? And the little girl says, great, we have a new girl in our class. And all the mean girls are picking on her. And the mother says, Zoe, how is that great? And then Zoe says, because now they're not picking on me. And the son, her little brother says, I feel a lecture coming on. He's right. I absolutely also adore Sally Forth. That's another one that's got a storyline. I read that for better or for worst. It's a redone. You know, they used to, I, I think I wrote, read uh, for better or for worst over 20 years and they went, it's people move, you know, along and you can see they change and things happen, they have relationships. And then it's not always happy, fun, lovely things. Sometimes it's pretty sad things. So the cartoonist decided to end and went back to the very beginning of uh, for better or for worse, and started off again with new drawings and a new storyline, but with the exact same characters. I didn't read it back in the day when it was like this, and I'm not 100% sure that the storyline that we're reading now is the stories that it was before, but I have a feeling it's completely different storylines. And it's, it's interesting. I, I would have rather have seen what happened to the characters that I had grown used to. I mean, you know, grandchildren and so on, but I wish he hadn't gone back and redone it because I really wasn't in, really into the characters that were there before. But, you know, several others that I read before I go to bed.
Oh, here's a really good one. Good one for skeptics. Bizarro. It's a... There's a bird right here somewhere. Um, a doctor, a woman doctor, is got her hands behind her back, and they're closed. And the man is sitting on the table. And she says, Studies show that placebos work just as well as antidepressants. Antidepressants. So pick a hand. i got to put that one on Facebook. That's a good one. And family circus. I don't usually like family circus, but sometimes they have something cute. And this is a little boy. He's got his cell phone, and he's just like so animated. He's talking to his grandmother. I don't know if I'm going to pronounce this right, but here's what he says. So first you catch a weedle, and he evolves into a kakuna. That'll turn into a bead reel. Then you, if you get an egg at a pokey stop, you hatch it by walking in. Well, you'll like it, Grandma. Go get your phone. I'll help you. Oh, that's pretty lame. One of this Pokemon phase is over. So I got grapes all over the place here. Let's see if I can pull this out and see if we can see some grapes. Let me reverse this. Uh, okay. Grapes. Look at conquered grapes. Let's see what's up here. Look at them all. I hadn't even realized. It's usually September is when we get the, the big thing of grapes. Okay, see that? Let's see if you can see it. There they are. So these are absolutely sweet as sugar. Delicious. Amazing grapes. So this has been a fun installment of Susan Reed in the newspaper. Hope to see you again. Bye.